Here's how a PhD in mathematics works. And when I say a PhD in mathematics, I mean in the US, in a US institution. Uh, PhDs in other countries, like somewhere in Europe, are structured differently. So this is just about the US. In the first year or the first couple of years, you would be taking basic courses, but at the graduate level. So these are some fundamental courses like algebra, analysis, topology, measure theory, complex analysis, etc. Also, in most institutions, besides the basic courses, you also have to take what we call preliminary exams, which are comprehensive exams in these like basic topics, such as algebra or topology, etc. Once you're done with your basic coursework, you start taking more advanced courses on topics that are beyond the fundamentals. So, for example, in algebra, you would take algebra, but then if you're going into number theories, you take algebraic number theory or class field theory or local fields, etc. And uh, that way you start meeting some professors that are in those particular areas. Once you've taken some courses with a professor in an area you're interested in, then you start talking to them about perhaps doing some independent study on a topic just to go even deeper on one particular topic of uh, study. Doing an independent study or a reading course with a faculty member is a good way to get to know them and then to start finding out more about their research and about their research area. But you can also request uh, appointments with other faculty in the department and ask them about their research, ask them if they are taking students, what kind of problems that the previous students have worked on, etc. So you can try to start deciding who you would like to work with. Once you have talked to people, to faculty members about this, then it's time to pop the question and ask somebody if they would want to work with you to supervise your PhD thesis. Once you start working with a professor, what happens is that you start doing more advanced reading courses or independent studies towards uh, learning some material related to a research problem. In most institutions or most professors would suggest a problem to you in some places, uh, the professors will expect that you come up with a research problem uh, to work on. Uh, myself and many people that I know, we usually give some research problem to a student because picking a research problem, specifically number theory, can be daunting and it can be difficult to pick one that is actually doable uh, for a thesis project. And then you might be working with that person for two or three years until you have done enough research and you have enough projects, enough papers that together, um, either because it's one big theorem or several papers that prove several results, that together form uh, enough material to constitute a PhD thesis. And then at the end of the process, you defend your PhD thesis. Also, in most institutions, this is just a happy event to talk to your colleagues and to your committee and to your graduate students about what you have done for your thesis. Um, but it sort of looks like an exam, but it is mostly a presentation of your work. So at that point, myself and many advisors, if we let you defend your thesis, it's because we are sure that's a thesis that you're going to graduate. So it's not, it shouldn't be nerve wracking. And then you graduate and off you go. Hopefully in the process you have found a job to uh, go after your PhD, either an academic job or an industry job, but uh, then you take off with your PhD.